Welcome back to the channel Flow Flutter Developers. Today I've got an exciting tutorial for you. Have you ever found yourself in a bind needing to export an IPA file for iOS devices without shelling out $100 for an Apple developer account? Well, you are in luck because I'm about to show you how to do it completely free of charge. Whether you are a freelance developer or a part of a team, getting your iOS output can be a headache, especially when that hefty developer fee comes into play. But fear not. Regardless of whether you are using Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, I've got a solution for you and all you need is a web browser. Now it's important to note that the IPA file we are going to generate will be unsigned, which means you won't be able to publish it on App Store. But hold on, because here is the kicker. I will also introduce you to an amazing application later in this video that will allow you to easily install your IPA file on any iOS devices, be it an iPhone, iPad, or any other iOS supported devices. This method is incredibly handy, especially when you are working with clients who want to test their app on real iOS hardware. With this technique, you will be able to safely generate the IPA file and deliver it straight to your client for testing. But before we dive in, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up, and share it with your Flow Flutter developers. So let's spread the knowledge and make everyone's lives a little easier. Alright folks, so we are getting started with GitHub action to make IPA files. First up, let's create a new repository to store our project. You can name this repository anything you like. If what you are doing is super secret, like for a client or for a company, you might want to keep it private. Otherwise, if you are cool with sharing, go for public. And once you have made your choice, simply scroll down and hit that create repository button. Now let's head over to the action tab at the top of the screen. Once it's open, type dart into the search bar. When you see what you are looking for, hit the configure button. What you will see next is a file generated for us called dart.yaml. It will be in the workflows folder inside the .github folder on the main branch. Take a peek inside and you will notice some default commands in there. We don't need those, so go ahead and delete them. Instead, we are going to replace them with commands you can find on my github page. I have left the link in the video description for you to easily grab them. Now, these commands are pretty specific for generating IPA files. Things like the name of the workflow, the build's name, and the sequence of commands to get that IPA file are all right here. I won't dive into each command in details, but if you're curious, you can check out the GitHub doc for more info. And once you have double checked and ensured that the commands are all replaced in the right order, tap on the commit changes button. Write a brief message to describe the changes you have made, something like updated workflow for IPA generation, and then tap on the button again to commit this file. Now head over to the main branch of your repository to confirm that the file was created successfully. Next up, we need to push the project we want to generate iOS build for into this repository. In this example, I am adding a demo Flutter app that you have all seen before. Make sure to push your own project at this step. Alright, now we are moving on to pushing our project into the newly created repository. I'm going to use the GitHub desktop app for this step, but if you are prefer the command line, feel free to go ahead with that. Just remember, we need to place the Flutter project file right alongside the workflows folder in the main directory of the project. So the workflows folder should be right there alongside folders like Android, iOS, lib, and the pubspec.yaml file. Once you have got everything in place, write a message for this commit, something like added Flutter project for iOS build, then commit and push those changes to the repository. Once you have pushed your project files into the repository, go ahead and refresh the Chrome tab to ensure that all the necessary files are successfully pushed. Cool! After that, we need to grant permissions to the workflows, so it can release a version for the IPA for this project. To do that, open the setting, then on the left side, click on Actions to see its sub-settings. From there, click on General. Scroll down until you find the workflows permissions section. By default, there might not be any permissions set for the workflow, but you will need to choose the Read and Write permissions option to give access to the workflows to read and write for our build in all the scopes. Then simply tap on the save button to confirm your changes. Now head back to the actions tab on the header. In the workflows section on the left side, you should see iOS IPA build. Tap on it to open it up. Once it's open, click on the run workflows button on the right side. Please make sure the main branch is selected. Then tap on run workflow to kick off the build process. Once that's done, refresh the page to keep an eye what's happening in this workflow. Once the workflow 
workflow is started, you will notice it kicking off the IPA building process. If you tap on the workflow and then on iOS build, you will be able to see the details and logs as the building process progresses. As each command runs, you will see its corresponding log messages below it. This helps you understand what's happening at each step. If any errors happen during this process, you will get a clear message explaining why the build failed. You can either search for solution online or ask me in the comment section for assistance. But please make sure you have a stable internet connection and have granted all the necessary permissions to the info.please file in the iOS folder. It's also crucial that the libraries and packages you have used for Flutter app are available for iOS as well. Depending on the complexity of your project, the build may take some time. And since I am building a demo Flutter app, it should finish quickly without error. However, if you encounter any errors, just leave a comment. I'll be here to help you troubleshoot and resolve them. Now that the build process is complete and all tasks have finished without errors, let's check out the summary. Tap on the summary tab on the left side to view your iOS build, which should indicate a successful completion. Congratulations, you have got your IPA file. Now head over to the code tab in the main branch of your project. In the release section on the right side, you will see V1.0. Tap on it to access the IPA file along with two different types of source code for your project. Now let's download the IPA file. All right, now that we have got the IPA file, you can install it on your devices without having to pay a cent. But how? Well, here is the secret. Just go to this website or search for the Scarlet app on Google. I've put the link in the video description so you can easily find it. Once you are on Scarlet, installing it easy. Follow the website instruction to install the IPA file on your iPhone. This step is really important, so don't forget it. You will need to go to your iPhone setting, then privacy and security, and turn on the developer mode. After setting it up, installing the IPA file and testing your app on your iPhone is simple. And if you run into any problems, just leave a comment below and I will help you out. However, if you prefer watching a video guide, I've got a one linked in the description below. In another video, I'll show you how to install an IPA file using the Scarlet app. But for now, this should be enough to get you started. Thanks for watching and I hope you find this tutorial helpful and enjoyable. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your developer friends and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Until next time, happy coding and I will see you in the next tutorial.